Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Earlier on, I have actually do an introduction on this standard EN or IEC 61000-4-2, which is for ESD, electrostatic discharge. For this video, I'm going to concentrate on whether you can pass or you fear the criteria for this EN IEC 61000-4-2 standard. I am also going to discuss the 10 step okay, to check on your setup for this EN IEC 61000-4-2 standard. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 50 series discussion on EMC consideration. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your support. Okay, firstly, okay, let's understand the 10 step to check okay, your EUT test setup okay, for this standard here. Step number one, okay, it's always very important okay, to ensure that the room where the test is conducted need to have a temperature in between 15 to 35 degrees. And also you need to ensure your humidity in the room must be in between 30% to 60%. Okay, so this is the first okay, so-called check on your test setup. Next, step number two, okay, you need to check your horizontal coupling plane. Okay, so basically this is the horizontal coupling plane. You can see that over here, okay, which is horizontally. Okay, they must be at least have a size of 1.6 meter multiplied by 0 0.8 meter. Okay, so this is check number two. Okay, you need to ensure your horizontal coupling plate need to have a size of 1.6 meter multiplied by 0 0.8 meter. Okay, step number three. Okay, the horizontal coupling plate is 0 0.8 meter above the ground plane on a non-metallic table and is connected via 2 times 470 kilo ohms breathing resistor to the ground plane. Okay, so as I told you that this is actually the horizontal coupling plane, you can see that it's actually placed on a wooden table. You need to ensure that the wooden table is 0 0.8 meter above. Okay, this is basically the ground plane. Okay, the wooden table need to be at least 0 0.8 meter okay, tall so as to ensure they actually apply to this step number three. And you can see that this horizontal coupling plane, you can see that there are actually two bleeding resistor okay 470 kilo ohm basically this will connect the horizontal coupling plane to the ground reference plane you can see that in between this horizontal coupling plane and ground reference plane the two bleeding resistor having the value of 470 kilo ohm so this will be the step number three on the eut test setup let's move on to step number four okay step number four okay the ground plane okay you should project beyond the EUT or the dimension of the horizontal coupling plane by at least 0 0.5 meter and should be connected to the protective ground system. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, this is basically the ground plane here. Okay, you need to ensure that the ground plane is basically 0 0.5 meter, okay, which is 0 0.5 meter outside the so-called horizontal coupling plane, you can see that this is actually the horizontal coupling plane. Okay, it must be at least 0 0.5 meter, okay, so-called uh, wider, okay, so as to contain the ground reference plane. Okay, so this is step number four. Okay, let's move on to step number five. Okay, step number five, the horizontal coupling plane should project beyond the UT, including the connecting line by at least 10 centimeter to all sides. Okay, so for example, this is your so-called uh, your DUT. Okay, so basically, this horizontal plane, okay, you must have at least 10 centimeter. Okay, anything less than 10 centimeter, okay, for example, if you have a huge EUT, okay, which 
may not allow you to apply to this step number five. So step number five, you need to ensure that your EUT, including all those connecting line, they must at least okay, 10 centimeter, which means that all around them, at least you must have a 10 centimeter clearance in order to, to so-called apply to this step number five. Step number six, sorry, step number six, your EUT table has to provide a distance of 0 0.8 meter to any other conducting structure. Okay, so basically this is your table here. Anything that is conductive or metal, okay, you must ensure that they are actually 0 0.8 meter away, at least 0 0.8 meter away in order to apply to this step number six. Step number seven, Okay, your EUT and cable should be isolated from the horizontal coupling plate by an insulating support, okay, which is about 0 0.5 mm thick. Okay, so basically you can see that this is basically the insulating support here. So the thickness of the insulating support need to be at least 0 0.5 mm thick. Okay, so basically this actually provides an insulator between the horizontal coupling plane and your EUT or DUT here. Okay, so basically this is step number seven. Step number eight, Okay, the return cable of the test gun. Okay, so basically this is a test gun. This is a so-called a power supply. You have a return, return cable here or discharge circuit respectively. They has to be connected with the ground plane and the distance need to be at least 0 0.2 meter to the EUT while discharge. Which means that okay, the return cable, okay, you must have at least 0 0.2 meter. Okay, so if this length is lesser than 0 0.2 meter, you doesn't oblige to this step number eight. Okay, so in order to ensure that step number eight, you need to ensure that your return cable, okay, or basically all the discharge circuit, they must be at least 0 0.2 meter away from your EUT. Okay, so basically this is step number eight. Step number nine, okay, the tester is not allowed to hold the return cable in the hand. Okay, so this means that, for example, we actually test your EUT, it's always a habit that we actually hold one hand hold the, the gun, another hand we actually hold onto the cable. Okay, we are actually not allowed to hold onto the return cable. We are only allowed to hold onto the gun. Okay, so this is step number nine. Okay, basically the tester is not allowed okay, to hold the returning cable in the hand. And last but not least, step number 10. Okay, the test gun is kept in a 90 degree angle to the discharge point. You can see that basically it's a 90 degree, you can see here. Okay, so basically the test gun is kept in a 90 degree angle to the discharge point. If this is not possible, it has to be stated in the test report. Okay, so if we are not able to have this 90 degree, okay, we must mention that in the test report, we are not able to achieve this 90 degree angle to the discharge point. Okay, so these are all the 10 steps to check okay, in order to ensure that your test setup okay, for this electrostatic this charge is all compliant to the standard. You need to ensure all these 10 steps. Okay, so this will be the objective. What we want to understand is basically the test result. Basically, they can be classified into four ways. Okay, the first way is basically everything all pass. Normal operation within the tolerance of specification, okay, which means that when you carry out your positive discharge, your negative discharge, be, so what kind of levels, okay, they actually, the, your EUT or your DUT actually operate in a normal, normally. Okay, so basically, it, it means that all the tests are compliant. Next, okay, temporary degradation, okay, which means that your degradation is just temporary or loss in operation or function, which is able to recover by self-recovery function. Okay, for example, when you shoot your DUT, you discharge your DUT, what happened here is basically the, your DUT somehow lost in terms of some function. Okay, but what happened here is basically it can be able to recover. For example, they can actually do a reset by itself and recover the, your so-called functionality. So basically this call under the classification number two, okay, temporary degradation or loss in operation or function, but they are able to recover by a self-recovery function. Okay, the third one is temporary degradation or loss in the operation or function, okay, which need to be recovered by user intervention or system reset. Okay, so the second and third, they are quite similar, except that this time round, instead of self-recovery, okay, you need to do some intervention. For example, you need to press your reset, okay, etc., or you do some adjustment, then your EUT or EUT actually able to operate normally. So basically, this is step number three. 
step number four, damage of the system or software, okay, which means that your your EUT is somehow damaged and cannot be recovered or basically lost the function or basically loss of data, then you fall into this category, which means that you are not able to pass the test. Again, with this, you probably will not be able to tell whether you pass or whether you fail okay, the standard. So on the next slide, I will further discuss on the pass and fail criteria for ENIEC 61000-4-2. Okay, so how do you think that whether you pass or fail? Okay, so for example here, if you have more than one error, okay, if you have zero error, definitely you will pass all the tests. Okay, so for example, if you have more than one error occur, okay, when you actually do the first 50 discharge, okay, that is applied to a test point, your EUT or DUT fill the test, okay, one time at the test point and test level. Okay, which means that for the nine discharge you pass, one point discharge that you actually fill. So basically, this is what it means. Okay, so you if you have this one error occur in the first 50 discharge, okay, so you need to do a second test you need to do a second test is you are going to apply at the same test point. Okay, so now instead of 50, you need to apply another 100 new discharge. Okay, if there's no error in this 100 discharge, okay, which means that your EUT or DUT actually passed the test. Okay, again, if more than one error occur in this 100 discharge, okay, which means that you have more than one error, for example, two, three, four, five, etc., your, your EUT and DUT actually fill the test. Okay, again, if you have exactly one error occur in this set of 100 discharge, then you need to do the third test. In short, if you don't have any error, zero error, you pass the test. If you have one error okay, in the first 50, you need to do the second test. Okay, so if, if on the second test, if you have one error out of this 100, then you need to do the third test. Okay, so if you have more than one error, for example, two, three, four, etc., you actually fill the test. So once you do the third test, it's actually again the same. You actually repeat the same point. Okay, if there's no error in the first 100 discharge, your EUT and DUT actually pass the test. However, now if you have one or more, okay, now it's one or more. Even with one error okay, in this 100 discharge, your EUT and DUT actually fill the test. Okay, so basically this is the pass field criteria for EN IEC 61000-4-2. Okay, I hope this will further clarify your question. Some of you actually asked me okay, whether how can we actually determine whether we pass or fail this standard. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, so please help to like and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.